A man seeks a fresh start in a new home. So this is it, huh? Yeah. I really appreciate you helping me move in. But soon realizes the house has other plans. Looks like they left in a hurry. There are signs that something is very wrong. Darkness and death surround me. A lot of the poems were about suicide. Evil is all around. They were almost like vampires. They were feeding on his misery. I'd never been so scared in my life. That was terror, real terror. Protect me from whatever's inside this house. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In the winter of 2007, Al Gonzalez embarks on a new chapter in his life. So this is it, huh? Yeah. Your new place. Sure is big. Yeah, I know. I was going through a divorce and found a home that I really liked, a place that I thought I could really live in for years to come. It couldn't have come at a better time. Well, you needed a change. Things were getting rough there. My brother was going through some tough times. He got the home at a good price. I really appreciate you helping me move in. You got it. <laughs> After the divorce, my older brother, Mario, was very supportive of me and uh, always helpful, always willing to come up and spend time with me. Got the keys? Yeah, got the keys. When I first seen the house from the outside, it looked great. Come on. When you go inside the home, it seems like even during the day, there is a darkness. I mean, every hall, every room that you go in, you have to turn on a light. What is all this stuff? <laughs> Looks like they left in a hurry. What was really odd about the whole scenario is they left a lot of personal belongings behind that you would think that they would want to take with them. 500 bucks. I didn't ask any questions. The uh, previous owner said, if you're interested, we'll sell you everything in the house for $500. Couches, televisions, dishes in the cupboards, everything. I really didn't think it was strange. I thought it was a blessing because after the divorce, I literally had nothing. Over the next few weeks, Al tries to get used to living alone. It was a pretty rough time for me. I was so excited about having a new house, a new beginning, really. There was so much stuff in the house left by the previous owners that I found things constantly that I didn't even realize that they had left behind. One day when I was cleaning up, I found a manila envelope. And I thought it was gonna be like tax papers or something like that. And I was gonna throw it away, but my curiosity got the most of me. What? It was poems about various things in life. As I read more and more of them, they started to get darker. Man. A lot of the poems were about suicide, laying on the concrete floor, blood coming from their mouth. Laying on a concrete floor, wanting to get out, get away. But darkness and death surround me. Haunted by the ghosts. That mouth. That wide gaping mouth. That wide gaping mouth. Dripping in blood. 
I thought maybe it was written by somebody who had lived in the house. She described dark things happening in her life and she no longer wanted to live. I am gone. And it was obviously a tormented person. I started hearing footsteps down the hallway. You could hear the cracking of the floorboards, like somebody was walking down the hallway very heavy. I wasn't alone. Somebody was in the house. Didn't find anybody, didn't see anything. Found myself living in a dark house. And a house that had dark secrets, maybe. For now, Al chooses to ignore his suspicions and gets to work setting up his home office. My older brother had a business where we found subcontract work for the military. My job was to help find uh, appropriate people for appropriate jobs. When I was sitting there, I heard a noise in the uh, living room. movement out of the corner of my eye. It looked like, uh, like a shadow. After a difficult divorce, Al Gonzalez seeks a fresh start in a new home. But so far, the house has been anything but peaceful. I came face to face with something that was definitely not of my world. I started to tell myself that maybe ghosts do exist. Maybe the house is haunted. Al? One night, Al's brother Mario drops by to check on him. I was worried about him. I wanted to spend time with him because he was going through a lot of different things in his life at the time. 
The home is very depressing. I didn't like the feeling of the house at all. It was like walking in a funeral home with no one there, that type of feeling. Al? You immediately just don't want to be there. Hey. Hey. What's going on? Well, the place looks better all cleaned up, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. It looks good. Look what I found when I was cleaning up. Someone left them behind. They were very odd, depressing poems. Talk about killing themselves, weird stuff. Sounded to me like something that Edgar Allan Poe would write. Man, these are depressing. You should throw them out. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Are you okay? You seem tired. I've been having a little trouble sleeping. No big deal. Hey. Have you ever... Ever what? Have you ever seen something that you can't explain? What do you mean? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what I experienced in the house, it was still something I was trying to hide still something that I didn't necessarily feel comfortable telling other people. For the next few days, Al attempts to keep his mind occupied. I was in my office doing some work. But whatever is in the house continues to torment him. I heard as if somebody was taking their fist. Bang, 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 bang. So loud, so sudden, that it really made my heart race. It was coming from inside the house and the wall. Keep me, O oh Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Please make these sounds stop. I was scared. And protect me from whatever's inside this house. I asked for it to go away. I prayed. But Al's prayers go unanswered. It didn't work. Religion didn't help. Prayer didn't help. In the spring of 2008, Al's life reaches an all-time low. In the midst of his mental exhaustion, he receives news that his father was murdered, the victim of a robbery gone wrong. My dad immigrated from Peru, $7 in his wallet, taught himself English and joined the military and made himself into a very good man. My brother was very close to my father. It was obviously very hard on my brother. He wouldn't answer the phone, he wouldn't talk to anybody. My brother started isolating himself. I wish that I could have done something for him at the time, but we lived so far apart.
when I heard my dad's voice call out my name. Dad? Al Gonzalez is convinced his house is haunted. For months, he has lived with a paranormal activity, but now the entity has taken it to the next level by mimicking the voice of his recently deceased father. Dad? I saw this ghostly man. I'd never been so scared in my life. That was terror, real terror. <laughs> I really had no options. I had no money. I had nowhere else to go. I had to stay at the house. I was stuck. Desperate, Al contacts the Fort Wayne Shadow Chasers Parasisters, a team made up of three female paranormal investigators. He had a lot of things on his mind, um, negative, not happy things. He saw a few things in his house he was very frightened of or didn't understand. So talk to me about what you've been experiencing. This house is noisy. The sound of people walking around and loud banging in the walls are constant. It's hard for me to concentrate or, or, or get any sleep. But I also see strange things, like, like quick movements, like shadows right out of the corner of my eye, like, like something is trying to hide from my view. And I saw a man. He looked like he was, he was from another time. <laughs> that sounds crazy, doesn't it? No, no, it doesn't, Al. Just give us a chance to investigate. I'm sure we can help you somehow. I hope so. That was a relief once I was able to tell them all of the things that happened. That's exactly what I needed. Somebody who wouldn't uh, ridicule, somebody who wouldn't think less of me. It was a burden off of my heart. We heard footsteps in the hallway. I suddenly felt a rushing at me, like an air pressure pushing me backwards. OK, that didn't take long. We have activity. I'm going to go check out the rest of the house. Cheryl is the sensitive on the team. I get pictures, and I also get feelings. I can sense what has been there or who has been there before in time. I saw a tall man. He had a hat on, and he was just standing there. Tina, there's something in here. You could feel your hair stand up on your arms. Yeah, there's definitely something here. Tina, are you okay? Yeah, I'm 
okay. I'm okay. I was rushed by like a black mass. I actually could see it coming towards me. And I felt the wind is, I don't know if it went past me or through me. I think we've seen enough for one night. Based on Al's depression and the evidence the investigators collect, they come up with a theory about what's been plaguing his home. Al, we believe that there is at least one evil entity living in the house, maybe several. They're called feeders. Feeders are like paranormal parasites living off heightened human emotion. The entities were attracted to him like a magnet. I think they were almost like vampires. They were feeding on his misery and his um, hopelessness. Wait. Let me show you something. I found these in a cabinet when I moved in. Someone who once lived here must have written them. The poems were very dark and talked about um, misery and despair and um, death. That is what the entities want and they needed. Haunted by the ghosts. And they brought this on to whoever lived in the house. World collapses. I am gone. It is very possible these feeders were here before you moved in, tormenting the author of these poems. I really think the best solution is to cleanse the house with prayer. I'm sorry, but I have no interest in that. I didn't really believe in the cleansing. I had asked God, uh, Jesus, everybody to take this away. It didn't work. Can you possibly move out, stay somewhere else? <sighs> Absolutely not. All my money is tied up in this place. There's no way. If you have to stay, you're going to have to learn to ignore the activity in your house. Don't give it energy. Don't feed it. We'll call and check on you, but promise you'll call us if you need us. The investigators really wanted me to make an effort to take ownership of the house. They wanted me to take power over it. But in the back of my mind, I didn't think anything was going to work. This monument in the background, the president has just arrived. Welcome to Helicopter. He's coming from Camp David to spend his time with a gathering on the White House lawn. This is a regular affair for the president. He has spent many hours in his bed. A dark entity called a feeder has taken over the home of Al Gonzalez. As I am turning, I see this large black mass right behind me, from floor to ceiling. It took up half the room. It starts moving very quickly down the hallway and turns into my bedroom. How do you sleep after you see something like that? I don't know. Yeah, it was frightening. After much thought, Al reluctantly makes the decision to sell his house. I can't live with it anymore. I have to find a way out. He asks the paranormal experts who have been advising him for help. 
I was concerned for him because there was so much activity there. I know the place still needs a lot of work. I wish your hope it sells fast. It got to a point where the entities there were breaking him down. Tina was helping Al find a realtor and trying to sell his house. He just wanted out of that place. I want out, Tina. And I can't afford to rent a place while I, I, I wait for this place to sell. That was his home. I, I had to make the decision to go. I mean, he definitely had me there poking him, but it was ultimately his decision. Try and stay optimistic. Let's just see what happens. OK. The house is on the market for several months, and there are no prospective buyers. I wanted to sell the house, get out from under it. <laughs> and couldn't sell it, couldn't sell it, couldn't sell it. And, of course, we have all this warm, cozy paneling, lots of nice details. OK, I'll leave you two alone. Holler if you have any questions. Did you see the asking price for this place? It's a steal. Yeah, it's a bargain. But? I don't know. What is it? Let's get out of here. What's wrong? What, I mean, babe. Buyers would come and they would even be right to the point of where they were going to buy the home, and then they would back out all of a sudden. Stuck, Al lives in a state of constant fear. What are the shadows? What is happening to me? It wasn't normal. That's what kept me, I think, in my depression. I was not leading a normal life anymore. To remain sane, Al focuses all of his energy on home improvement while ignoring his friends and family. He quit communicating with a lot of people, including myself. You know, I didn't talk to him for a long time. Come on, I'll answer. Come on. When you live your life day after day, expecting something that you can't explain to happen, you start losing a little bit of your sanity. And then things get worse, because they feed off of that. Whatever was in the house fed off of the anxiety, fed off of the fear. They liked it.
Al Gonzalez is under attack by a supernatural entity called a feeder. I'm a grown man, and you like to think that you're strong and tough, but now I'm being physically hurt. And it was personal. Why? Why? I knew then Why? that it was going to get worse. Why? And one day I'm going to find myself in a situation that I can't escape from. Al feels himself sliding deeper into depression. I started drinking a lot, smoking a lot doing things that I didn't typically do before then. I almost didn't care about my life. The longer he stays in the house, the more he finds himself connecting with the previous tenant. I ended up relating to the writer of those poems. The anxiety, the fear, the desire to get out. Over the next few months, Al's hopelessness overtakes him. One night, Cheryl, the paranormal investigator and sensitive following his case, has a vision. felt a sense of foreboding. He was sick, weak, and hopeless. It was almost like vultures. They were just standing there waiting for him. They wanted to torment him. Cheryl attempts to warn Al. I go to the front door, and it was just a single lady standing there, dressed like she was going out. Can I help you? This is where the party's at? Um, no. There's no party here. Sam said this is the place. Oh, sorry. There's no Sam here. I'm sure this is the right address. Look, I'm sorry. There's no party here tonight. There was no car in the drive. This is 30 seconds later, she's gone. No way for her to get out of my yard. I got three acres. She, she'd have to walk a minute and a half to get to the road. She's gone. Now I'm really mad because I'm being tormented. Get off my property! Nobody 
No car, no cars going down the county road that I lived on. And now I'm just really freaked out. Visit DestinationAmerica.com. Al Gonzalez is being targeted by paranormal entities called feeders, and their grip on him is tightening. I felt as if something was choking me. I felt as if I had somebody's hands around my neck. <laughs> Al once again reaches out to the Parasisters for help. I had to find somebody to help me out. I couldn't do it on my own anymore. Al contacted us and told us that things really got worse. We were so very worried about him. The whole house seemed really different. It was a lot colder, it was a lot darker. Something changed. Definitely something changed. Are you OK? I can't take much more of this. They're toying with you, Al. That's what feeders do. They live off your fear. They live off you. We know this has been hard on you, Al. But you're not in this alone. Al was in such terrible shape. He just wanted to close his eyes and maybe not wake up. And we could not let that happen to him. What just happened? Are you OK? And I remember saying, did you just scratch your face? It scratches. <sighs> scratches. I said, no, I didn't touch my face. And I said, well, you have scratches. Let me see. They just appeared out of nowhere. That, that is it. Tina's right. You have to leave this house. You can't wait for it to sell until you can afford it. And Tina, she was afraid that she would come over one day and I would be dead. You're right. It's time for me to do something. After suffering in the home for months, Al finally agrees to move out and rent a modest apartment in a nearby town until the house sells. I think that's it. Tina spots the manila envelope containing the dark poems from the previous tenant. You're not planning on keeping these, are you? No. Absolutely not. Let's get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. I hear that. Al, 
Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Starting over isn't a bad thing. A lot of people have to start over. I can turn the page and move on. Today, Al Gonzalez is a new man. Slowly but surely, it seems like he's reaching back out. He's starting to communicate more and more with family members. He is doing well. He has a job. He's supporting himself. As for the house, after years on the market, Al finally allows the paranormal group to cleanse it. In 2013, he sells it to a devout young couple. I found some peace in that. I thought if anybody can handle it, maybe a good, strong, Christian young couple could handle it. They're not going there in a state of depression with a lot of baggage like I did coming from my divorce. I know what happened to me, and I know that it was real. I know what I had to go through in order to find myself in a safe place now. I'm absolutely sure that there's something else out there beyond us. <laughs>